In session 12, learning objective three, we're going to look at average returns. What has happened on average over the last 85 years in the stock markets to small company stocks, large company stocks, government bonds, corporate bonds, and treasury bills. Uh, we know that to calculate an average, we simply take the 85 years of returns, add them up, and divide by 85. So it's pretty simple. We have hundreds and hundreds of numbers across the five indicators studied by Ibbotson and Sinkfeld, so we can do all kinds of statistical analysis in terms of uh, means, modes, means, averages, standard deviations, variances. And this is what uh, we, we found when we looked at all these averages. For large company stocks, we see an average return of 11.9%. For small company stocks, 16.7%. For uh, bonds of all sorts, about 6%. Long-term corporate bonds, 6.2%. Long-term government bonds, about 5.9% on average over the last 85 years. Treasury bills have, and inflation, again, were uh, steady and slow-growing. T-bills averaged 3.7% over the last 85 years and inflation 3.1%. And we know from session uh, seven, we can use the Fisher effect to calculate the real return on these instruments. Real return for large company stocks, I simply subtract the 3.1% to get 8.8%. Uh, for small company stocks, real return was 13.6% and so on. Uh, I simply got those numbers by taking the average return minus inflation to get the real return in an approximation using the Fisher effect. From these numbers, we can also calculate the risk premium. Risk premium is excess return required from an investment in a risky asset over that required from a risk-free investment. So risk-free investment being the treasury bill rate, we simply subtract the T-bill rate from these averages to get the risk premium. Um, risk-free rate being the T-bill rate, so we'll subtract the 3.7% from all of the above average returns to come up with the risk premium. So we see, on average, remember that uh, large company stocks average 11.9%, small company stocks 16.7%, long-term corporate bonds 6.2%, long-term government bonds 5.9%. Now we can subtract the T-bill rate from each of those returns to get the risk premium. So 11.9% average return on large company stocks minus the T-bill rate of 3.7 gives us a risk premium of 8.2% on large company stocks. Uh, for small company stocks, has a very high risk premium, which you, you would expect, high risk, high return. I take the 16.7% average return minus the T-bill rate, and I get a risk premium of 13%. So remember that number, 13% is risk premium on small company stocks. Uh, remember it because it is significant and so large, uh, and it uh, strengthens the uh, fundamental rule of finance that when you have a high return, there's associated high risk. Long-term corporate bonds have a risk premium of very low, 2.5%, and long-term government bonds have a risk premium of only 2.2%. Obviously, T-bills, no risk premium because we'd be subtracting the risk-free rate from itself.